Hi and welcome to this video. In this one, we're going to talk about Tailwind CS's Flexbox layout. So hit the subscribe button and let's get started. Let's generate the simple HTML5 boilerplate and I'm going to insert the Tailwind CSS CDN along with the title for this web page. Let's provide a background color to the body, which is going to be BG Cyan. 600 flexbox is a great tool that helps us lay out items on the screen it helps us create websites faster and easier when talking about flexbox there are several major ideas and concepts that you, you should be aware of and we are going to talk about all of them throughout this video step by step the first two are that a flexbox layout requires a flex container that could be any html element that houses other elements inside of it and the contained elements they're going to become flex items let's go ahead and create a flex container i'm going to create a diff and i'm going to give it a class of h screen which is going to basically um, enlarge the height of the diff to 100 vh and that's going to be it within this diff i'm going to create three more diffs these diffs are going to be the flex items i'm going to select all three of them using Control d and i'm going to create a class there and i'm going to provide them with a background color of cyan 500 their text is going to be white and i'm going to provide a little bit of padding on the left and right and also padding on the top and bottom and the text is going to be for excel now we need to provide content inside of these diffs so the content is going to be either item one item two or item three so far this is the progress that we have made we have a div that acts as a container for these three items the div that acts as a container we're going to select that and we're going to convert it to a flex layout to using the flex utility class the first utility class uh, in the container department is the flexbox direction if i set the flex uh, the display to flex and if i save that everything is going to go horizontal that's because this is the default flex direction we can change that and the default is this flex row and if i hover on it we can see the css property flex direction row we can change that to row reverse in which the items are going to start from the right we can also change this to column which is going to be the normal flow of the document in this scenario and we can also change it to column reverse which is going to make the item start from the bottom of the screen. If we don't have enough space in the container, when the container shrinks down, we are going to end up with a scroll bar. We can see the scroll bar right here. Now, the way that we can fix this with Flexbox is to use a class which is called Flex Wrap. And as soon as I save that, it doesn't matter how small the width of the screen goes, the items are always going to wrap to the next line. There we go. So this is how wrapping works if it is forward, but we can also reverse that. Now in the forward one, the items, they come down in the reverse one, the items, they're going to go up like this. So let's take a look at that. There we go. And then the other one, and then the other one, they're going to go up. We have this uh, class of gap, which is going to provide gap among the columns and among the rows. For example, a gap of four, is going to be 16 pixels here is the gap for column and here is the gap for rows we can also specify individual axes this is going to provide a horizontal gap so a horizontal gap is going to be the gap among the columns there we go so there is that we can also change that to y which is going to be a vertical gap among the rows but i'm going to just set it to gap four for columns and for rows main axis and cross axis now main axis is always going to be parallel to the direction of the flex box if it is row main axis is horizontal if the flex direction is column main axis is going to be vertical and then we have another axis which is called the cross axis the cross axis is always going to be perpendicular to the main axis. So if the flex direction is row and the main axis is horizontal, what is perpendicular to horizontal? 
that's vertical, and that's going to be the cross axis. The reason that I'm talking about these is because we have a lot of properties in Flexbox that only apply on one of these axes. And keep in mind, if we change the direction of the Flexbox to column, main axis is going to go column, but what is the perpendicular to column? It's horizontal. So cross axis is going to be horizontal. Let's take a look at these properties. So if I say justify start, it's going to put all the items to the start of the main axis, which is the left of the web page in this scenario. If I set it to end, this is going to put all the items to the end of the main axis, which is right. We could also put them in the center. This is the center. Let's uh, put the space between the items. Now, one major concept, uh, actually the most important concept when it comes to Flexbox layout and grid layout that you need to always keep in mind is that we don't actually move elements. We distribute the white space. So the space that we can see on the left of the container and on the right of the, uh, on the left of the items and on the right of the items, we just distribute that. And by distributing that, we move the elements. It looks like we're moving the element, but we are not. We're just distributing the white space. So if I put the white space between the items, this is how it's going to look like. We could also divide the white space evenly. We can also put the space around the items and we can set this to stretch as well. Now, this is when the main axis is horizontal and the flex direction is drop. If I change the flex direction to column, all of these are going to change. So if I set it to start, all the items are going to go to start, which is the top. If I set it to end, all the items are going to come to the end. If I set it to center, all the items, you can see this is moving vertically, not horizontally. We could basically, we have the same uh, classes that we had before. And let's put it to around. And finally, to evenly. Now, I am going to remove this uh, flex column utility class. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about the utility classes that refer to the cross axis, the alignment of items in the cross axis. And they are the items utility classes. So if I were to say, let me first save this so you can see the changes. Now, if I were to say items start, this is going to put all the items to the start of the cross axis. If I set this to center, this is going to center the items vertically. This is going to put them in the end. And finally, we can also put it to the default one, which is stretch. If I were to change the flex direction to column, this is the start of the row. This is the end of the row. This is the center of the row. And finally, we have the stretch for the row. If we have a lot of items, so now we have a two line flex container. We have a three line flex container, and I don't think we can go down. So if we have a multi line flex container, we have properties that align these items as well. And these properties refer to the cross axis. And by now, you know what cross axis is. So if I set it to just uh, to content start, this is going to put everything to the start of the cross axis. This is the end of the cross axis, the center of the cross axis, and we can also put the space between the two lines of flex container. We can put the space evenly and we can put the space around them. By default, the order of the items are determined by the flow of the HTML document. Let's say I want item number one to appear as the last item. For that, I'm going to use order one. By default, all the items, they have an order of zero. And the higher the order, the more the items are going to move to the right of the screen. And in this situation, if I put the item number three to order, let's say negative one and save it, we can see item number three just move to the left of the screen. This is order. We also have another class, which is grow, which means if I set it for any individual item, the that individual item is going to grow to grab the entire space available in its container. So if I set it to grow, you can see item number three just grew to grab the entire space. We also have shrink. I'm going to set this to grow and I'm going to grab item number two and I'm going to set it to shrink. Now, by default, all the items, they are shrinkable. Uh, take a look at this number two. See where that goes. 
see it went to the next line because the item just got shrunk now if i say i don't want a specific item to shrink i can disable the shrink factor and we can just write zero and it's going to disable it and now item number two is not going to shrink there we go so item number three shrunk uh, item number one got shrunk but item number two didn't shrink next up let's talk about flex basis flex basis determines the original uh, or the default size of a flex item now before talking about that you need to keep in mind that flex grow the grow and the shrink utility classes along with the basis utility class they work along the main axis and we can set the basis let's say to uh, something large for example 60 now this initial size is in this scenario width but if i change the flex direction to column this initial size is going to become height and finally let's talk about how to align any individual item the align utility classes they refer to the cross axis as well so the classes are going to be self if i set it to self start it's going to go to the start if I set it to end, it's going to go to end. If I set it to center, it's going to go to center. And if I set it to stretch, it's going to behave as its default value. But let's set it to center. That's it for Tailwind CSS Flexbox layout. See you in the next one.